So a whole year ago, I made this video right here about the ESPN 2019 100s list, comparing them to that present day to the year 2019. And you know, I had to get right back into my bag. We're gonna be revisiting this idea and doing it even better. List like this is exactly why you will never, ever, ever see me on this channel at least talk about high school basketball players. It's way too risky and way too much can change in the span of a year. And many of the past ESPN 100s lists have proven that. A quick example is the 2018 NBA draft class. Zion Williamson was not number one and we all know he's by far and away the best player out of that draft class and probably the best player out of these last few draft classes that we've seen in a while. Number one at the time was RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett's not even a top two, arguably top three player out of that class right now. Then at three is Cam Reddish. I'm a Hawks fan and I don't want to talk down on Cam Reddish but just know that he is not top two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten player so far right now out of this NBA draft class. So with all this context applied, we're gonna go ahead and hop into ESPN's 2020 top 100 list. So as clear as day, number one is a social media sensation. In my mind, Jalen Green, I've been knowing of this dude since it's been at least like two, three years. And I didn't even know who he truly was. It was just based off of some cool Instagram pictures that will show up on my timeline. As you can see on this list, this man Jalen Green was listed above Kate Cunningham, Evan Mobley, Kaminga, Scotty Barnes, Suggs, and so on and so forth. Now, him being viewed as a better player over Evan Mobley. Jalen Suggs, Kaminga, Barnes is nothing crazy or absurd to say, but to say in the year 2021 that he is a better prospect than Kate Cunningham right now, Stupid mother is borderline delusion. Delusional because Jalen Green does absolutely nothing better than Kate Cunningham on the basketball court outside of jumping out of the gym and being just a flat out better athlete. Kate Cunningham's a better scorer. Kate Cunningham is a better shooter. Kate Cunningham's a better passer. Kate Cunningham is a better defender. Kate Cunningham is a better post scorer. He's also the better off ball defender. Like, he has him in every single aspect of the game. And yet, ESPN's ranking system, which I have no idea what it's based upon, has Jalen Green number one and Kate number two. Maybe this did this to stir up some controversy and have people like me talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Attention gets the money. Moving on to number two, though, is Cade Cunningham. I mean, what can I say? He is literally better than every single prospect listed above him and under him. He is by far, in a way, the number one overall pick and one of the more complete or one of the most complete prospects that we've seen in a very, very long time. There's not too many holes that you can point out about his game. He has no holes. This man is like a gap filler. He has an end. NBA ready body right now as we speak, something that the number one ranked prospect in this draft class does not have, and the number three ranked prospect in this draft class does not have either. And he also has the most mature game out of the bunch too. Now part of the reason why I feel like Kate Cunningham did not get as much publicity growing up or at least in his senior and junior year in high school was because Cade went to Montrevert, bro. Montrevert's like a top tier basketball school, possibly the best basketball school in the entire country. And when you play at a school like that, you're not gonna get oh so many touches. You're not gonna get oh so many stats. You're not gonna be dropping 30, 33 a game like Jalen Green was able to drop back in high school. No, no, he's gonna settle for that comfortable 14, six and four. So, so far this ESPN 100 list isn't actually that bad. They got Evan Mobley ranked at number three. Evan Mobley more than likely is going to be the third overall pick in this 2021 NBA draft that is actually gonna happen tomorrow or depending when you see this video Thursday. Even though I believe Evan Mobley may be the second best prospect, having him number three is nothing outrageous at all. I'm not gonna dive too deep into that. Then at number four, there's Jonathan Kaminga. Okay, that's super solid as well. G League player, he put up some good high school stats, nothing too crazy if you ask me. Then at number five, there's Scotty Barnes who also, See, just like two seconds ago, I was talking to you boys about Montrevert Academy, bro. He is listed at number five. He was able to maintain all the stock that he had out of high school, maintain it through college, and even brought it up. And now, in my mind, he has put himself in a position in the NBA draft to go ahead and secure his spot or maybe even raise up a pick or two. All these players have, in fact, at least a top six. The top six players in the ESPN 100s list are going to be, without a doubt, the top six players selected 
first in the 2021 NBA draft. And that is up for no discussion or debate. Now, in the order in which they are taken in, may be up for debate, but just know that these names are top six and the discussion. Now this is where things get really weird. Once you leave the top six, you go ahead and look at number seven. Number seven, there is BJ Boston. Now if you don't know too much about BJ Boston, he was a super popular up and coming wing player who went to Sierra Cannon, you know what I'm saying, played with Bronny Jr. and was a pretty good scorer coming out of high school. He went up into college, things didn't go as planned, he has injuries, the play style is kind of wacky, and there's just a lot of things that held him back from being truly great. And when I say held him back, bro, it really held him back. He went from being a top seven player out of this class to now he may be a second round talent. Hopefully not, I'd wanna see him in the first round, but more than likely he's gonna be selected anywhere from 20 to 30, maybe 32, 33, 34. Zaire Williams was at number eight. He definitely went through his fair share of injuries as well. Now he definitely wasn't just like BJ Boston. I feel like they're super similar players. They did go to the same high school. I think that's super fair to note as well. They both did not finish their freshman year in college officially at all, but what these two young wings have going for them is the fact that they have a nice ball handle and also they have wiggle to their game. And wings with wiggle will always sell in the NBA. They go very far. Now at number nine was Greg Brown and he has easily one of the most dis disrespectful and super eventful our Instagram highlight reels of all time. He was doing like 13, 14, 16 year old white boys from the suburbs so dirty just to go ahead and go into his freshman year in college to put up doo doo stats. Now I don't know too much about him because I haven't watched him like that before but from what I can see he's like a of course a first round talent but He's not a lottery team. Then at number 10, rest in peace, Terrence Clark. I'm not even gonna dive into his game at all because that is what's not important. Someone lost their life and this man's life in general was just his energy was just irreplaceable. And I feel like he would have done great things in the NBA and long story short, I just really hope that a team like the Boston Celtics, because he's from there, bro, goes ahead and calls his name on draft night so his family can have that dream come true. Rest in peace, Terrence Clark. That man was truly special. Ranked at number 11, though, was Jay Guap, Josh Christopher. He's also another big social media dude who just be doing, you know what I'm saying, the weird that 90% of these dudes be doing on Instagram like these, bro. I, I don't get it. I truly don't get it. This man only stands at six foot four and was playing the point five or the two five position in his high school. And obviously things have changed in college, but I'm sure it's fair to say that he certainly has dropped off just a tad bit in the rankings. Now he was never a top five player or a lot to be like this, a top 10 player. He was just outside of ESPN 100 rankings list. But I would like to say that he didn't lose too much of his value and I still expect him to do big things. Hey, I may even call this man a draft sleeper. So on we go with the list. We see Mr. Sharp at 12, Jalen Johnson who went to Duke for just like a couple games at number 13. He really didn't lose too much value at all. No one can really say too much about him because there's just a lot of unknown. He left in the middle of the school year. But even while leaving in the middle of the school year and your name relatively being in the same spot, that's quite impressive if you ask me. He's a real deal. But seeing guys like Isaiah Todd, who went to the G League and really like didn't perform too well and he has so many concerns, that's just kind of like, I don't want to say disheartening, but it's quite disappointing. And then you got Mature Maker, Don Maker's little brother, bro. He played a doo-doo. He went to Howard. I remember when that whole thing happened, bro. He, he went to Howard just to play doo-doo. Everyone thought he was going to go crazy. Crazy, but he averaged like what? Let me go ahead. I, off the top of my head, it's like 11 points, but let me look it up real quick. Yep, I was right. Man was injured and stuff like that. And, and even when he was healthy, he just wasn't playing right. He just did all that just to average 11 points. A lot of people thought he was going to dominate, but he just did what a maker does whenever expectations are placed on him, I guess. I don't know. Jada Springer is a prospect that I haven't paid too much attention to, if I'm being completely honest, but I have a feeling that this dude's going to be good once he enters the league. He's number 17 on ESPN's top 100 list and on multiple mock drafts he's anywhere from 15 to 20. He's looking like he's gonna be a solid player. One of my favorites, Sharif Cooper, has been able to maintain his stock even though he went through some injuries back in college and didn't put up some of the greatest efficiency numbers either. So that says a lot about him and his game as well. Then you can see guys like Cam Thomas, DJ Stewart. I wanna look for someone who really like jumped hella high in the ranking board. Scrolling, scrolling, 
I'm still scrolling and I see, there we go, Moses Moody, the truth. He also, my God, went to Montrovert Academy. He's just a smooth scorer who's gonna do a lot of smooth things once he gets into the league. Honestly, if there's another top 100 dude who jumped up hella high on these boards. And Moses Moody's one of the only dudes who jumped stupid high and improved the stock like crazy. It's super interesting to see where these guys were just a year ago in high school compared to now, whether it be overseas, playing college ball, or professionally in the G League. This is the end of the video though, man. I really, really do hope that you make your day great and, you know what I'm saying, like this video. All this was like off the dome, so if my mind team kind of scrambles, bear with me. It's like 2 a.m. in the morning right now, and it's Wednesday. I'm trying to bang these videos for you guys, man, but outside of everything that I just said, man, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, blah, 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 and everything above that, go ahead and make sure to make your day great. Until then, I'll get right with you. No way, no way, no way, yeah. Make me back when I couldn't get a play, yeah. No hope, I ain't have a place to stay, yeah. I got the work, made it surf, free the way, yeah. Told my girl who'd have a